Hello and welcome to climbingalbris.com. We've got another fantastic video for you today. Before we do that, make sure you click that subscribe button to the Climbing Albris YouTube channel because what I've been told, if you don't click that, you'll get seven years of throw ball bad luck. And nobody needs bad luck when it comes to throw ball now, do they? Anyway, if you're superstitious, definitely click it. If you're not and you're willing to take a risk with your the luck on your throw ball, then go ahead and uh, don't click that. It's just a, a little old wives tale that I've heard and I'm just the messenger, so don't shoot the messenger. Anyway, enjoy the video. In this video, I'm gonna talk about lanyards and in particular, I'm gonna talk about, you know, the lanyards that I started with, the lanyards that I've used in the past um, throughout my career, kind of when I was getting started and midway through and then how I've decided on the lanyards that I really like because it didn't happen overnight I did, it, when you first get started you have no idea what type of lanyard you like what type of adjuster you'll like um, why people prefer one over the other because when you get started everything is so difficult and so new and so alien that you can't you can't kind of tell those finer details that you can once you've been doing it for a number of years so I'll I'll give you a kind of a breakdown of you know the diameter of rope that I like the the type of rope the uh, the length of rope that I like to use the adjuster that I like to use uh, hitch cords and all that kind of stuff um, so I'll give you I'll try and give you as much information as I can and really break it down as to why I've decided on on the lanyards that I have so let me tell you about when I first got started, um, the first lanyards I ever used were three strand and some people might find that hard to believe because they feel like you have to have started in the in the 70s or in the 80s uh, to be, have been using three strand but the lanyards I used were three strand they had these big like plastic kind of eye, captured eyes in them um, and we're using a Prusik loop on the on the three str strand lanyard all that kind of stuff and I didn't know any different so that was that was fine to me it did the job I could lanyard in safely so you know I wasn't when I first started I wasn't exposed to a lot of different types of gear I just used what the company gave me that I worked for um, and like it was in good condition so I wasn't worried about uh, you know safety and stuff because it was it was an approved lanyard it met the requirements at that time and I didn't know any different so I used a three strand lanyard probably for the first the first eight months of my career then I moved to a different company and they provided me with um, actually no the second company that I worked for they also provided me with a three strand lanyard so I used the three strand lanyard for a number of years actually um, until until I then <laughs> upgraded to like um, 16 strand Yale XTC like Spearmint I think it was called um, it was one of the standard you know Yale green and white um, 16 strand XTC lines I think it was XTC anyway anyway the 16 strand um, and I still really was just working was just getting the job done wasn't really looking into too much equipment wasn't looking into too many different types of technique so I was using the Prusik loop on the lanyard um, very simple very simple um, and then eventually after a few more years uh, working for another company and they provided me with a Mori lanyard and I was using that with uh, you know a pulley and a VT so I, I, I stepped up from the Prusik to the VT with the with the pulley to tend the slack which just it makes a world of difference just to be able to like tend your slack with the one hand on the lanyard it that that if you're not doing that already then Tomorrow you need to go and learn how to tie either a VT, a distal, uh, one of those types of knots, put a pulley on it and use it for your lanyard because that is a game changer if you're not already doing that. So I did that for a while, so I, I was climbing on Yellamori, then I did the Sterling Tri-Tech which is like 11, maybe 11mm 11 I think, um, Amori is 12mm I believe. 
Um, then, then I bought this, which is Yale Blaze, which is 11 mil, and then I climbed on that for a while. Um, and then that's when I realized what length of lanyard I like. So this Yale Blaze is 12 foot. Um, and 12 foot lanyard is great for competition climbing. So I use this one when I uh, do competitions. Um, but aside from competitions, it's just not long enough really to get, because sometimes you need that extra length. You need to be able to, to be able to move that that much further away from your time point and sometimes when you're setting up like a single choked off configuration on your lanyard to get that extra length you need that extra few feet so what I realized is that I I don't want a lanyard too long like some people like to climb with you know 30 foot of lanyard they use like the sidewinder or they they coil it up put it in a bag all that kind of stuff I I'm really not one of those people I don't like to have too much bulk on the side and I don't like it to take up too much time uncoiling coiling all that kind of stuff so I want a lanyard that's that's I feel like is long enough but I can just kind of loop it up and have it on the side um, on the side of my harness so I I now use 15 foot lanyard when I whenever I'm working I always use a 15 foot lanyard uh, unless they're like special special occasions like huge huge takedown where I need a huge um, like steel core flip line or something but but the lanyard that I'll use on a day-to-day -day basis is a 15 foot lanyard um, so if, if you if you've watched quite a number of my videos you'll probably know that I really like the the Yale 11.7 series of ropes so it just kind of was obvious that that's what I would use as a lanyard. So I I, I would use the hitch climber, the VT uh, with Epicord. Um, <clears throat> on on my lanyard, I really really always go for like some kind of capt uh, captured eye, some little capture device. So this specific um, carabiner from Rock, Rock Exotica, they have this little spring-loaded metal clip that's built into the carabiner and that means that you you can capture that spliced eye and so it always stays in the right position it doesn't kind of it it doesn't wander around to this side to near the gate or anything it stays in position so a really important thing is to to use something some kind of device to capture the eye so on this lanyard I use a little um, rubber capture from DMM, and that does exactly the same. But it's not obviously it's not built into the carabiner there. So if you like a certain carabiner and you want to capture the eye, you can get these little rubber things. They're very very cheap and worth their weight in gold, really. So, and then you can obviously decide how how close you want it to keep it in position. Um, yeah, so. It, Going back to this lanyard, so I started using Blue Moon um, or Yale 11.7, and I would I would use the hitch climber mainly because I had one spare, um, and then it does give you that option of being able to go around a branch or a stem, and if you want to be connected to the center D's for some reason, then you can clip it and it's all in line basically exactly what the hitch climber pulley is designed for just to keep your system all nice neat and in line if it's coming back to the same point now the majority of time 95 percent of the time i'd say maybe even more than that is that you can i'm connected to my lower d's with my lanyard so i would say that if if you if you have um just a single attachment micro pulley then that is absolutely fine you don't need to go out and spend more money on getting a hitch climber when it's hardly ever going to be used unless you feel like that is going to be something that you're going to do a lot so just because i had a spare one i would use that on my lanyard um so yeah you can use a normal pulley but since the blue moon um i've then 
now become really really fond and this is this is my go-to lanyard this so this is actually the lanyard that i do climb on now the blue moon is the one that i was climbing on for quite a long time i i like i enjoyed that setup but uh i was introduced to the trango cinch and i found one luckily uh in a rock climbing shop that was brand new and i didn't realize that they'd stopped making them so i i think i bought one of the last ones um and this is a very, very simple, it's designed as like a belay device for rock climbing. And so it can take um, 9.4 to 11 millimeter rope. And I decided to use a 10 mil Sirius rope from Teffelberger in this because that was, you know, somewhere in the middle. It glides so smoothly through, through the Trango cinch, but then locks out. As soon as you put your weight on it, locks out and um, works perfectly now the trango cinch <clears throat> i i think if you're it something like like any mechanical device really if you're new to climbing i think stick to the the um the friction hitch setup with the micro pulley just to just to really get to, to know that well because like i say if i'd have tried this trango cinch when i was only a few years into climbing if i'd have tried you know the art positioner if i would tried any one of those things um i don't know if i would have really felt the benefits really got to grips with the making the most of that device because i'll have been still being maybe pretty clunky as a climber so i don't know i i, I feel like st like for this as a setup is is fantastic as long as you get the hitch cord and the the hitch that you tie in combination correct and it's not really really stiff but it bites every time as long as you get that good then that's going to be a really bomb proof system um and there's not much that can go wrong there and then i then i feel it's time to to kind of move on up to the mechanical devices so the I'll, I'll say now i haven't really spent much time on the art positioner or the petzl uh, zillion um haven't spent enough time to to talk about those in detail and it, how good they are compared to the cinch that kind of stuff um i just really love this and i i feel like it it really ticks all the boxes for me for using a lanyard um so another reason why i use 10 mil sirius for my lanyard is because um thinner rope obviously weighs less so this weighs less than an 11 mil an 11 7 a 12 13 mil um, and even though it's thin and i don't like thin ropes on like the feel of them on my hand they feel like too coarse because it's just my lanyard it's not like a climbing rope where you kind of grabbing it to climb up and move around this is just a lanyard for putting on and to secure yourself in a good work position it's just to you know to keep you in one position while you're making a cut and 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 that kind of thing so it's different to where, where i i don't even like climbing on 11 mil rope for my main climbing line it doesn't there aren't there aren't those same reasons that i don't like it for a lanyard so that's why i'm willing and i like a 10 mil rope for my lanyard because it works really well with my friction device my adjustable friction device and it doesn't matter that it's thinner because it doesn't matter about that that feel because it's it, it's used as to put yourself and get yourself in a work position and you, you're not climbing on it and pulling yourself up and like really needing to grip it hard so that's why i use the 10 mil okay let's move on to carabiners so in arboriculture a lot of people use the oval carabiners like the dmm ultra perfecto um the rock exotica oval this petzl oval and they do that and it was designed i think the first company to do it would might have been dmm with the ultra is so that everything like the hitch cord the pulley and 
you know, the two eyes of the hitch all sit evenly and it's the weight is dist distributed evenly it doesn't it doesn't put the carabiner on a bit of a tilt or anything like that like it would do with a carabiner such as this obviously this carabiner um, this shape wouldn't have enough space down at the bottom for the hitch cord and the pulley so that is the that is why the oval ones are designed and they're so popular for tree work because they make this setup um, they make it sit perfectly in your carabiners now for the termination end of the eye it doesn't make any sense why you would use an oval carabiner because you want the the load which is coming from your rope you want the load to be put down the spine and these carabiners it it forces the load to slide down into that point and then load down the spine of the carabiner and also this is a nice compact carabiner um, so that is why I always go for for this type um, nice small compact carabiner it's going to load properly it's it's less likely to to kind of move around um, so that's the carabiner I choose for the termination end next thing is I always 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 have one of these mini DMM thimble prussics on my rope and now that is to choke off to a single rope configuration so so this lanyard is 15 foot so I would get uh, I wouldn't even get seven and a half feet out of it when it's doubled over I would I would maybe get I don't know five and a half six feet really by the time it's gone round something um, and I'm positioned and then I've got the little bit of tail at the end so if I if I needed to get like 12 13 feet away from the time point where I've got my lanyard this allows me to go round a branch and not not in a sense choke off because I'm not I'm not because choking would be just putting the carabiner directly onto the rope and so it was choking so th the point of this little um, prusik is it, it prevents you from choking round but it enables you to go onto a, a single rope system on your lanyard and then you have the full length of the lanyard to use minus you know minus that one foot two foot however lot much it's taking so I always keep this prusik up on the end of my lanyard up against the the termination end there just for those times that I need that extra length I, I I don't use that all the time don't use it that often but when I need it it's so so useful now on the other end of my lanyard <coughs> so past so let me let me just untangle this for a second the way I would have this lanyard is this is my f adjustable friction management device so I would have that clicked to my D-rings I have the termination clicked to my D-rings this is for when I'm stowing the lanyard and because it's 15 foot long and, and the, so that means the tail is quite long I have this additional extra um, mini accessory cord with a little prusik on it so I have that tied in a four uh, four wrap prusik um, it's kind of quite a stiff accessory cord so it's just, it, it slides up and down nice easy but it doesn't slide without me wanting it to and that just means that I can I can kind of loop this up on my side D ring and then I can loop the tail up on my side D so when I'm stood up on the ground I have four kind of lengths of rope going down and all of them just touch the just touch the ground so that's the maximum amount it's tailing so when I'm climbing around it's not I've not got this like 10 foot tail that I'm dragging around that's going to get hooked up and caught on things and wrapped around and clove hitch and half hitch itself to limbs. Um, it's all quite nice and neat but without having that, you know, one of those devices like Sidewinder or, or something to, to stow your tail. So I would really, really recommend something that does this same job. So that's just a tiny bit of accessory cord 
that I got from rock a rock climbing shop with an accessory carabiner, obviously not for climbing on, but you can get little those little lanyard clips um, that you can get little plastic or rubber ones, um, and you can you can get all sorts of things that will do the same job. Anything just to hook the tail of your lanyard up is going to be perfect. Now, something that I don't do that that people some people do do and find it useful so I, i'll i'll talk about this anyway it's not something that i do personally but is have like a full um weight bearing prusik and carabiner on their on their tail of their rope so if ever you need to use both um your the regular termination end and then for whatever reason you want a double lanyard so you may be ascending a tree um, and rather than using the rope, you would use the the other end of the lanyard. So you'd use the tail. You would then put another carabiner in the tail of the uh, uh, of the tail of the lanyard, and you could just tie a very basic prusik. Now it doesn't need a pulley or anything. If this is going to be used just the the odd time, so you can use the that prusik. Um, just for something simple and easy, uh, just for those occasions where you want to use the end of end of your lanyard. Maybe you want it for an additional um, bit of work positioning, and you've got enough tail just to use the end as as like an extra lanyard. So that's that's a good option if you've got spare prusik, you've got an extra carabiner, and you think it might be useful. Then that's that's an idea too. Here's a great tip for you. So, a lot of you might know that I really don't get along with the Akimbo that I bought, and it's an expensive device, expensive mechanical device that I just didn't get along with, and it just sat in my climbing box for ages. And then I decided to put it on my my lanyard while I was still using this Blue Moon, um, and realized that this makes an absolutely fantastic lanyard adjuster. Now obviously very expensive lanyard adjuster so you wouldn't go out and buy this just for your lanyard but if you're like me and have bought one and don't use it and it's collecting dust then stick it on your lanyard and see if you like it and I tell you like when when this Sirius that I use all the time when this gets soaking wet and I just don't want to use it um, then I go back to this blue moon and use the akimbo and uh, I use that as my lanyard and more recently, I've actually taken the Akimbo and started using it on my um, DMM Captain, the Traverse Hook, and that that works absolutely fantastic for the uh, adjustment device on the Captain Hook. So my final thoughts on why and how I choose my lanyard configuration. So first of all, the rope type. So it doesn't matter to me if my rope type is say 1.5% elongation or 2.8 3% elongation because it's such a small length and usually it's also double round because you're using it as your lanyard you don't really notice the difference in the elongation so that is really not a factor in in choosing the rope type it's usually how the rope works best with your friction ad adjustment device setup really so I choose the cinch and the rope that works best in the cinch for my lanyard for me is the Sirius if I am choosing uh, like the VT with the micro pulley I will I will choose something like a, a blue moon or a Yale blaze or something that works well with the hitch and all that configuration that I like so that's how I choose the rope type um, the device obviously the device or the friction hitch is the is the, the the real main focus is how well you can get that to to tend with with ease and also you know um, to to grab when you put your weight on it um, those kind of things so tend in with these grab instantly uh, not slip not kind of creep or anything like that so that's what you want from your device it's all about the combination it's all about how you feel comfortable because it's like at the end of the day this is our life support system so you need to feel 
comfortable in your choice. You don't want to feel that, like, you know, is this going to hold? Is this going to slip on me? Am I going to kind of fall a few inches and get that real heart-wrenching shock? So, um, and obviously, you want to make sure you maintain your equipment, your carabiners are all working correctly. Um, so I just want to give some honourable mentions at the end of this video. Like I mentioned before, I haven't tried all the devices and some devices that really get a lot of praise are the ART positioner, um, which I haven't tried much of, so I can't recommend that but it does seem like an amazing bit of equipment I haven't tested it to see if I get along with it personally and to, to find any faults with it um, also I haven't tried the Petzl Zillion um, and again that sounds great but I haven't tried it to see if I can find faults or if it wouldn't work for me um, and yeah there's there's a bunch of different hitches that I don't like and so when you when you're just using a hitch and pulley combo you just really gotta find the hitches that work well grab easily work well with the ropes that you use um, and yeah so that's my that's my rundown on my lanyard setup Thank you for watching this video about my lanyard setup. I hope you find it useful. I hope you go out, start tinkering around with different hitches, different um, hitch cords, different rope types, different devices, borrow your friend's devices, see what you like. Um, and it'll take a while to actually realize if you like something or not. You, you won't know within the first like hour of using a device if it's for you or not. So you have to give it time. So. Um, borrow people's see if you can go wreck climbing and use different devices and yeah i hope you find some of my tips useful so thank you for watching as always don't forget hit that subscribe button down there and um yeah keep tuning in and i'll keep trying to make useful videos